Hi, I'm Jacques from Hobie, and this is your quick start video for Mirage Kayaks. We have an Outback that we're gonna cover today, but this video will also include or pertain to your Revolution 11, uh, Revolution 13, your sports, uh, your Tandem Oasis, Tandem Outfitter, and the Revolution 16. Uh, all the kayaks are gonna come complete with everything that you see behind me. Your paddle, a gear bucket, a cassette well plug, obviously your owner's manual, uh, some other literature like a parts and accessories catalog, and of course your Mirage Drive and your seat back. And some of the models will include your Lowrance Ready feature, so you'll receive this packet with some grommets for your through hole wiring uh, so you can install a fish finder more easily. Your kayak will include uh, your owner's packet here, which includes the owner's manual, also a warranty registration card and a welcome letter. Um, you can register your kayak online for warranty and that uh, warranty is valid for two years from date of purchase. Um, but this is a really useful tool. It shows you how everything functions. Um, so you definitely want to read that front to back. And if you've purchased your kayak secondhand or you didn't receive your literature, everything is available on our website, hobie.com. Just choose the support link for product support and you'll find uh, all of the manuals, uh, parts catalogs, everything that you could really need. It's all available digitally for download. So our boats ship with the Mirage Drive fully assembled, uh, but the one thing that you may need to put together is your seat. Uh, the dealer typically would already have this done, but if for some reason you're you're putting your seat together, let me show you how we do that. So we include these two screws. These are the pivot screws for the seat. And you'll notice that they've got some, some thread locker on here. And all you need is a number two Phillips screwdriver. Basically just put it together where the hinge is. I like to start these just by finger tightening them to get them started so you don't cross thread it. And then just screw these in. And you just want them snug. You don't want them too tight because obviously this is going to be pivoting up and down on the screw. Installing the Vantage chair into your kayak. I always like to make sure that this bar is sort of elevated. If you have it all the way down low, it makes it a little bit cumbersome to install it. So as long as this is up, the way you adjust this is just by pulling this guy and it just rotates. So you can adjust it without the seat on. It's real simple. But so just say that's halfway up, put the chair onto it with the back down. And what you do is you pull up on the back while, while simultaneously pushing down and back on the front and that locks it in. So I'll do that again so that you can see how that works. Basically you just set the chair in with the back down and lift it and push back and down and that locks it on. Always want to make sure that you buckle the latch in the back. That keeps the chair from actually coming out of the kayak if you roll the kayak and, and surf for instance. One thing I do like to point out to people is how this side tether is routed. You don't want to have this forward. Let me show you what that would look like. With If you had it reversed, it's not going to want to install correctly. This creates a problem zone and it's not going to recline as far as it would. It's designed to go back like this. That way it doesn't foul in the, in the seat area and you get a full recline motion as well. So the great thing about the Vantage chair is how comfortable it is and how adjustable it can be. Um, you're high up off the floor, so you're dry, and it does have adjustments. Obviously the back reclines, and that's done just with the handle here on the right side. It has a lumbar adjustment, so if, you're, if you like a lot of, of lumbar support in your lower back, you basically just turn this knob in as it clicks, you'll see this get tighter. Or if you prefer more sort of side bolstering and more dish in the seat, you can let that off so that you sit more into the chair. Um, I always recommend starting off in the low position, not starting in the vantage position, because as you raise the seat up, you know, your center of gravity is a little higher, so it could feel a little tippy at first. Um, the boats are very stable, but I do recommend to start in the low position. Um, the way you adjust the front 
is you pull this strap forward and just lean back and that will raise up. So you can see it's got quite a lot of adjustment. And in the back, there's some legs. So you've got two different back positions. That's sort of the middle setting. And then you can go all the way up like so for the vantage position. And keep in mind, every time you lean forward, the legs are going to retract and it's going to default to the low setting. So if you're adjusting your chair, you go to lean forward in the boat, the legs will, will retract and the seat will go back to the low position. So that is a normal function of the chair. Now we have the Mirage Drive. This is the MD-180 with arc cranks. This is the new crank for 2018. I'll show you how that works. But there's two ways you can install it into the kayak. You can have the kayak on dry land, just put the kayak on its side and install them into the well um, or in the water as long as you've got this much depth out the bottom of the kayak. But they basically just drop down into the well like so and they automatically lock in. You've got your shifter levers right here. The longer one is your reverse, shorter ones forward, they are marked and that's how you shift from forward into reverse. When you do shift the fins, you want to have your legs fairly together. Uh, if they're all the way spread apart, the fins would be up against the bottom of the hull and they're not going to want to shift. So you want to have your feet pretty much together uh, and that way you'll, you'll be able to do an easy shift. Next, you'll want to adjust your crank arms to the right length. This will depend on how tall you are, what your inseam is. The way you adjust it is you just pull the lever top here and you just go you know, back for shorter legs squeeze that, that button on top and come forward if you're longer. And a normal stroke would be like a slight bend in your knee at full extension. And when adjusting the crank arms, you want to make sure that you have both crank arms on the same number. There's a dial on the drums and you want to make those equal, otherwise you're going to have one leg that's going to go further than the other. When you're coming into the beach or you're setting the boat on the ground, um, you'll, you can just separate the crank arms and you can hook this cockpit hook with this bungee on here and that's going to keep the fins up along the bottom of the boat so you can come right up to the beach you don't have to worry about um, how deep the water is you can go right up onto the sand to remove the drive it's simple as just toggling back the two click and go levers and lifting it straight up and it'll come right out also all the kayaks are going to ship with what we call the cassette plug and this is a plug that you can install into the well of the Mirage Drive if you're not going to be using it for pedaling. If you want to paddle the kayak, you can use this just to fare the shape a little bit better. Uh, if you're going to use a tandem by yourself, you could always use one of the cassette plugs in the front well if you're sitting in the back. That way, you're only using one drive. You don't have to deal with two. The way you operate the rudder is there is a down handle here in the cockpit on the right-hand side. So you'll pull that pretty hard to get it to go down and keep tension on it while using this cleat. At the bottom of the mat pocket, there's a cleat. You want to make sure that that line is in the cleat. That's very important for the rudder to function correctly. When you're ready to pull the rudder up, you'll uncleat the down line and you'll come over here on the left side. There's an up handle and you just give that a tug and the rudder will come up onto the deck. On the left hand side, just by your seat, you're going to have a steering handle. This is how you control the kayak left to right. On tandems, there are two handles, front and rear seat position. Our kayaks ship with a two-piece fiberglass paddle. I'll just put the drip rings on now. These have a sort of a concave shape. You'll want the, the scoop, the concave, to be facing towards the blade, like so. Just push it down the shaft. You don't have to go all the way to the end. You just want to have it down the idea is not to have the drip ring go into the water on every stroke. That way it keeps the water off your hands. The paddles assemble with a push of a button and there's a couple different settings. You can have it to feather it like that. Always advise to bring the paddle with you for a secondary way to maneuver your kayak. So we'll just go over the entire boat now. Um, all of the kayaks are going to have handles, front and rear, um, a variety of hatches. Um, the Outback here has a large hatch opening. Um, there's accessory buckets that you can drop down in there. You can use that area for installing your fish finder batteries. 
you always want to keep your hatches closed when you're on the water so you don't take take on water. Um, most of the boats are also going to have a sail receiver. You can install ram mounts in here, but you can also put a sail kit. Um, they're going to have molded in rod holders. The Outback's got four of them, front and rear. So these are molded in rod holders. You've got your Lowrance through wire fitting here, so you can have your fish finder on either left or right side. Um, you've got molded in carrying handles, molded in trays, cup holders. This center hatch is an eight inch center hatch here. The way this works is you twist this handle open and it pivots open. There's a hinge here so you'll never lose the lid. It's got a nice O-ring seal. Um, you've got your, your gear buckets. You can order deeper gear buckets. You can order additional ones to put all your tackle and things. And these just drop down inside. You can close it back up like so. You've got a large cargo area in the back. You can put different accessories back here, like an H crate, a live well. Um, some, some of the boats you can benefit from using a scupper plug. All of our kayaks are set on top, so the water is going to you know, kind of flow in and out depending on how much load you have in the, the boat. Water can actually be coming up into this area. So if you have a lot of load in it and you want to plug those up, you can. Um, it's personal preference though. Moving further back, you'll have um, another hatch. Some of the boats will have a hatch in the back. This one does. Take note also that there is a spare rudder pin in all of the kayaks. So you've got a spare right here. These are designed to shear off if you were to, like, let's say you're car topping your kayak and you bump into a wall or a fence or something and you hit your rudder, it's going to shear the pin off instead of breaking the kayak. So that's a, that's a nice feature and we include a free replacement rudder pin. Those are available from your dealer. Again, carrying handle. You've got your drain plug here. Some water getting in the hull is, is normal. It's to be expected. And this is where you drain it out. You just lift the kayak on its side from the bow and the water will drain right out here. There's an O-ring on the drain plug. You just turn that finger tight. You don't want to tighten that with pliers or anything. Just finger tight is the best. And then lastly, when you have the rudder in the up position, you can use the, the bungee on the deck here to hold the, the rudder because when you're car topping your kayak, typically you're going to do that upside down, flat on a crossbar. That's how we recommend to transport and store the kayaks. You don't want them right side up. Uh, upside down is always the best because if you have it right side up, the bottom's very curved and it's just not set up um, to be on a crossbar so you can dent your boat pretty easily. So just flip it upside down and when you do that, you've got a bungee here to keep the rudder up. Thanks again for watching our quick start video. If you have any questions, again, you can go on our website, hobie.com and click on the support link. We have product support for all different models. Just find your model. There's also uh, literature like our parts and accessories catalog that you can find things uh, like the sail kit, fishing accessories, like a live well or an H crate and uh, speak to your dealer and they can hook you up with anything that you like for your kayak. And thanks again for watching. We'll see you on the water.